Marketing in itself has become like just so overcomplicated, or at least in it has the perception of being so overcomplicated and elusive and almost absurd. So before I uh, go any further, I want to play something for you. We're seeing a shift in consumer habits. Everything is moving towards cat videos. And the agencies that don't realize that will get left behind. Cat videos are an unbelievably effective new business tool. We've seen phenomenal growth in this category. We're taking that learning and applying it to our business model. In 2012, John Street will lead the industry into a brand new communications era with the launch of the world's first and only Catvertising Agency. Cat videos provide an excellent return on investment. The costs are minimal. It's win-win. By 2015, cat videos are going to represent 90% of the content on the World Wide Web. It's proven results. Using the four pillars of creativity, we provide work that's persuasive, unignorable, relevant, and rememberable. Our goal is to integrate cat videos into every stage of the customer experience. 24-7, 365. To facilitate this change, we've incorporated our own cat video production studio. Okay, we're rolling. Filming, writing, seating, all completely in-house. Creating a good cat video is no accident. A lot of people think you just show up in a room with a camera and a couple of cats and start filming, but they take a tremendous amount of planning. We storyboard every frame. We actually created our first cat video in uh, February of 2008. Cat approaches the camera slowly from afar, then the uh, camera would pan to the right, and then when it comes back, the cat's closer. Really, uh, I think that was the kind of magic moment in the spot. It kind of came up seven for us, I guess you might say. You think sometimes you're going to run out of material uh, with cats, uh, but you never do. You come in on Monday and you go, oh my god, trombone cat, and it's excellent. In an era of unprecedented change, there's one agency with the courage to change everything. Nobody wants to see ads anymore. They want cat videos. Ask yourself, what can cat videos do for your business? So that's an ad agency out of uh, Canada. And I just absolutely love that because it's the industry itself making fun of themselves of how, you know, how fast everything's become almost absurd. You know, I, my biggest client or the biggest automotive client that we work with is the entire central region of Penske Automotive and been working with them for about seven years. And, you know, so in the midst of that, obviously, everything started popping up, social media and um, you know, SEO, all of these things are coming about. And Whit Ramanat, who's the EVP of uh, the Central Region, would always say to me, Ritz, I don't want to hear about this Facebook stuff. I don't care how many kittens someone's cat had, you know? And it would just absolutely drive him crazy. He said, everything on there is about cats. I don't understand it. So I found this and I thought, this is so perfect. So he got a kick out of it, but I think it really illustrates that uh, you know marketing has become this so obscure thing there's so much now and everybody thinks it's so complicated and we can't figure it out and how can we possibly understand it all and people are just shooting off and doing this and doing that they don't even knew, really know what they're doing why they're doing it or even understand how it works so um, you know I don't I really don't believe it has to be as elusive and complicated as everybody thinks it really is still logical Marketing overall is the same thing it was many years ago. We just have a lot more tools and vehicles now to get that marketing message across. So, but really, truly what matters is knowing what, the, knowing what your message is and how do you get to that message and do you know how that affects your consumers? Do you know how you're representing yourself in that message? You, couldn't you even define that message for me? And how does it need to be defined? So, you know, perception versus reality. So it's one thing to say you stand for something or to advertise that you stand for something or to write it in a mission statement that you stand for something. And, but that doesn't mean you really stand for something, you know? And, and that's the problem. There's a disconnect between marketing and reality and that is more jarring than you could ever believe, especially in the automotive industry, which is, 
you know, been steeped sort of in bad stereotypes and, you know, things that are not that uh, likable. So, so just think of this. Think of this, and, and you probably all travel a lot as I do too, so think you go, uh, and I'm going to give you an example here. So you go into a rental car office and you're sitting there and the room's kind of cold and the carpet's dirty and the, the lights are low and there's no one behind the counter. And then you spot on the wall this mission statement that says, you know, we're here to provide excellent service and go the extra mile for our consumers mm -hmm. and their experience and to be the best in car leasing and blah, 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 blah. And you're sitting there thinking, what? Or this is my favorite one, and I know we can all relate to this, which is, and it's funny, I'll tell you another quick story. I was in Allen Ramps presenting in the room next door, and I was in Madison, Wisconsin, because we just, uh, Penske just bought two stores up in uh, Madison, Wisconsin, a Lexus store and a Toyota store. So I went out to dinner the night before with Allen and Whit Ramanad and the, all the GMs and everything, and he says, Ritz, you're going to sit through Allen's training tomorrow. And I'm like, Allen, what do you train on? He said, phone skills. And I'm thinking, oh my God, you're gonna make me sit through eight hours of phone training? Are you kidding me? You know, I'm like, no. So anyway, I have to tell you, it's one of the most eye-opening experiences I've had. I finally was like, I got you, Wit. I, I know why you don't want me talking about SEO and pay-per-click and all this stuff. You just want people to answer the phone right, you know? Because we did a lot of secret shopping phone calls and it was amazing, 100. If I didn't know better, I would have thought it was set up. Because 100%, 100% of the phone calls, the mystery phone calls from Lexus to Kia and everything in between were absolute fails on how, so that's why I'm gonna get to this next one. So another disconnect, and I've experienced this, and of course I experienced it over and over again on these mystery phone calls that Alan Ram was making, and you get that receptionist, and she says, you know, well, I'll get to that in a second, but you get, you get on hold, you get in this loop, right, where same kind of thing. They're sitting there telling you how they are, the, your business is so important to us and our consumers are the best and you know we're here to over service and handle every need you have. Okay, And that keeps looping and looping and looping and looping. And now I've been on hold for five minutes and I'm going, really? I mean, do they think I'm this stupid? I mean, what kind of idiot do they take me for? I mean, I'm, I'm hearing this, but I'm experiencing this. I'm already frustrated. I've already formed my decision on every experience I'm going to have with this company moving forward. So, I mean, I guess the lesson there is there can, there's a grave, it, grave consequences to have that disconnect between what you're saying, kind of illustrated here, customers come first, you're our top priority, but the guys on the phone look in the other direction. That absolutely, we form emotions instantaneously and 99.9% .9 of decisions are emotional. People will bring along rationale and logic, but that's usually just a justified emotional decision that's already been made. And we form them, I mean, neuroscience is now, you know, come around to specific studies that say, you know, we, we know that decisions are made in the hypothalam in, emotionally and they're instantaneous and sometimes only your subconscious realizes that you've made that decision already. And you can form a, what's gonna perceptually be a bad experience moving forward from that first moment. And what happens when you experience a disconnect, again, I'm hearing this, I'm, I'm reading this, but I'm experiencing this. So that equals a lie. And a lie to me means do not trust, so I'm already, whether I'm like really thinking that, that's definitely what's going on in my head. That's just human nature. That's the way our emotions work. So I'm thinking now, everything going forward here is do not trust whatever these people say, whatever they do, okay? So that brings me to the next thing, which is we can all agree we spend advertising dollars to get people to pick up the phone and call, call the dealership, right? I mean, that's one of the main things we want people to do as a, as a starting point, right? So the cliche of the first, you know, you never get a second chance to make a first impression kind of thing. Think about this, you know, what really is the first impression of your dealership? I'm gonna isolate it to one thing right here just so that I can kind of give you a good example of it. But you know the ones, the, the ones that answer the phone and they say, 
you know, Joe's Motor City, uh, this is Kathy, uh, how can I help you today? And they're upbeat and they're engaging and you're just like, you can see the smile on their face through the phone. And it clicks in your own head like, oh, this is gonna be a good, engaging, positive experience and something I can trust. That's going on in your brain already, whether you realize it or not. So, you know, we'll call her Confident Kathy. Then you know the other kind, the one that answers and goes, Joe's Motor City, how can I direct your call? And you're like, oh, I'm glad I called. Uh, this is, this is going to be a great experience, I can tell. So what I'm saying there is, are we possibly undervaluing, again, neuroscience talking about emotions, but are we undervaluing potentially our biggest asset? First impression, right? Are we, because generally the receptionist is the lowest paid in the dealership or one of the lowest paid positions. But yet we all just agreed we spent advertising dollars to get consumers to pick up the phone to call and that potentially is this huge first impression of what the experience is gonna be like to do business with this dealership. So why are we not valuing that position more and finding the right person? And you know, God knows, maybe paying them a little bit more because they're so important to the entire organization. They're setting the tone of that consumer's experience with that dealership. So, I mean, my advice to dealers is find a rock star. If you've got one already, great, or find one. Find that guy or girl that just is happy to come to work every day and you know, is engaging on the phone and is upbeat and has got a smile on their face all the time. And make sure you tell them you know, you're very important to the success of this entire organization because you set the tone. You're one of the first impressions that most of our consumers get. So, you know, the flip side of that is, you know, so you don't pay them more, so now you're go. it's like a round robin, right? Now you, that rock star you did have, you didn't pay them that little extra bit, maybe $10,000 a year, $5,000 more a year that could have paid off in spades just by people being seated with that good emotional experience, that first impression. So now you're back to having the, you know, so let's say you had that rock star, rock star and she left because she, you know, the bank across the street offered her an executive assistant job that paid $3,000 more a year. I mean, if you really understand that we form our decisions emotionally and they're formed instantaneously, we truly are undervaluing this position. Automotive dealerships are. I mean, I, it, it's the same when I go to Harris Teeter or buy groceries or go to Starbucks. I mean, Starbucks is so successful because they train them all to be very engaging and upbeat, and they know. They know that that's a lot of people's first impressions. So, again, talking about the brain, and it's really important to understand, you know, I think, you know, as dealers, uh, they want to believe that people are only shopping price and they're only shopping features, and it's just not true. Really, that's usually about fifth on the consideration set. And I, I'm sure everybody here has heard this before, but again, a car is gonna, the second largest purchase probably anyone's ever gonna make in their life. So emotions are gonna run high anyway, because it's a stressful thing and parting with that much money and it's a big decision and it's very emotionally based. And so emotions are gonna run high anyway. So people are already coming into that potential decision or shopping experience on guard already a little bit because they're just naturally, we're, we're nervous when we have to make a big purchase decision. So again, the thing that I wanna point out is, you know, marketing is the, the sum total of everything you are and everything you do and those things matching up. You can't be out there advertising that we our customers are first and we, you know, we strive for excellence and whatever. And then I'm like, I've seen the commercial I call and I get Joe's Motor City. Really? This is, this is you striving for excellence? This is how you have, you know, someone answering the phone. This is excellent. Like, no, disconnect. I don't like this. I don't trust this. Uh, uh. And believe me, it happens that quickly. It truly does. So, I really urge you to think about, you know, again, marketing is only as good as the message, you know, all this buzz about all the tools that are available now and the new shiny objects and the greatest of everything that's out there. And it's exciting, right? Because 
unfortunately, as an industry, we've tended to look for, always be looking for that silver bullet, that next sale. We live in that 30-day world, and we're looking for the panacea, or what's going to sell us cars you know, this weekend, and we do horrible things like have staffed sales events, and you know, and really just destroy things, <laughs> you know, emotional impressions of our dealership in possibly a weekend. It's tragic and I've seen it happen. So really I think it's important to focus on, you know, what, and don't fo focus on features, and I'm talking about your business and yourself as a whole. Don't just focus on features, you have to focus on benefits. And then you have to think about those benefits in an emotional way. How does someone see that benefit? What is, what is the future desired state? And how is that benefit matching up with that? And really, you know, start to define your dealership. If you haven't already, I mean, literally nothing matters. This is your foundation. You can have all the fanciest tools and all the newest everything. If you don't know what you stand for and, you, and that doesn't match up, with what you're saying to people. That's what you've probably heard about internet, like make sure your website, we always talk about continuity and consistency. If you're advertising this, make sure it's on your website, make sure it's on your point of sale, make sure it's on this, make sure. Well, it's the same thing. It's, it's even more important because if you've got some tagline about we treat you like family or whatever it is, well then you darn sure better treat them like family. And the minute they don't feel that, then you know, you've potentially lost the chance to do business with them. So really it is about getting back to basics and really talking with your staff and understanding, you know, from the receptionist to the, you know, the lot guys and finding and getting everybody together and really, you know, setting that guiding star for here is what we want to stand for. Here's what differentiates us so that when people wake up on a Saturday morning, they know they want to buy a Toyota, why they're going to come buy it from us and they're not going to go down the road and buy it because we stand for this and we execute, we believe in this, everybody that works here believes in this, it has a big meaning within the organization and externally to our consumers. And we have to live it, we have to believe it and live it every day because people, like I said, and, and I said, neuroscience has absolutely proven this, that people make emotional decisions instant or form emotions which are what we base our decisions on instantaneously even before our cognitive brain has a chance to even understand that we've made that decision so you know and and unfortunately and i don't want to say anything to offend anybody but you know unfortunately you know i always say like it seems like general managers and sales managers of automotive dealerships are like the easiest people to sell. It's like a guy walks in the room and he's got the shiniest, newest, coolest doodad that goes on your phone to this, to that, and it's like, yeah, $1,500 a month, sign me up. No idea what it's going to address. Does it match up with your DNA, with who you are, what you stand for? Do, ha, have you even thought that deeply about it? Most likely, a lot of them have not. It's just they want to do the cool thing. So again, when you, when you focus on just all the new shiny objects, it's, it's sort of like a fool's path because then you're, you're focusing on fashion rather than substance. You know, you're really, uh, and, and fashion fades and buzz quiets down and things change, but you gotta focus on the basic things that are representative of your dealership that are emotionally important to your consumers and the people that work at your dealership. And that's gotta be your foundation. Things that people will want today and they'll want 10 years from now. Think about those types of things. And focus on those things. It's not all about, you can have all the fanciest tools in the world and throw money out the door, you know. But again, if you have a crappy receptionist who sets the tone the minute they pick up the phone, okay, we're done. So again, I really just urge everybody to, to step back a little and really concentrate on the foundation and get that guiding star in place so that everybody knows what it is that you're trying to do, what you're trying to be representative of, what you believe in and what you're doing every day in your dealership from the cleanliness to the type of people to everything. Every, because at the end of the day, that's, you know, we want people to feel good from the moment they engage with us, whether that's in an advertisement and then certainly 
on the phone or in person, we want them to feel like, okay, this is all matching up. This is good. This is, I, this is an experience I can trust. I, I, you know, I feel good about this. You know, and again, that that translates into your reputation, that translates into all these other things and word of mouth and all of these things, which all translates to dollars, you hope. So I was just going to get, so I was going to use this as an example. So, and hopefully I don't offend any golfers, but a lot of amateur golfers will go and buy the best clubs in the world because they think like, okay, if I have the best clubs, I'm going to be an awesome golfer, right? Well, no, it's not about the clubs, it's about the swing. You know, there's no shortcut to excellence. I, I mean, if we gave Tiger Woods uh, some shitty clubs, do you think he'd still beat you, George? Probably close, but yeah. He'd... Probably close. <laughs> right, Tiger's gonna win, let's be honest. So again, just throw, there is no shortcut to excellence. You can't, you can't make up for lack of practicing and hours on the driving range by blowing a ton of money in the pro shop. It's not gonna make a difference. You're still gonna golf the same way, you know? <sighs> Sorry, George. <laughs> so again, um, before you go with whatever that new tool is or that new process you may be putting in place or that new CRM you may be considering or that new equity mining tool or you know, that new website company, or whatever it may be, make sure you know why. You know, I I'll give you great examples, I mean, it's hilarious. I spoke at a 20 group meeting and it was probably three years ago, just as social media was starting to really, you know, take hold. And I said to all the guys in the room, I said, okay, I want to start off by saying, like, I'm going to go through all of this, but the last thing I want you guys to do is to go running back to your dealership and get to your internet manager and go, we got to get a Facebook page. Don't do that because you can actually cause more harm if you don't know why you're doing it. There's such a fallacy out there. And I'm just going to time sake, just talk about Facebook is one thing, you know, if, George's, you know, George's motor cars he runs a contest and he does some pay-per-click advertising on uh, Facebook and it says, you know, to enter, uh, I mean, like our page to enter to win a American Express, $100 American Express card, whatever it is, right? And so I'm like, hey, hey, I'll go shopping. Yeah, I'm going to enter. So I like George's page, but George's page has nothing of value on it for me. There's no information. There's no reason for me to engage. There's no reason for me to ever go back to George's page. Well, just like, um, just like, the, search en just like the search engines have algorithms, Facebook has what's called an edge rank score. And even though I've liked George's page, and Je George may get 10,000 you know, likes on his page because he ran this contest. But a couple weeks go by and Facebook realizes Hmm, Kathleen has not gone back to George's page at all, hasn't engaged, hasn't commented, hasn't liked. She must see no re it must she sees no reason to go back to George's page. Must be completely irrelevant to her. We're gonna shut off his newsfeed to her. So it's this false sense of security. You know, I've had people, I've had um, Pinkberry. I remember sitting in my conference room with them and they're like, our goal is to get 10,000 likes by, you know, whatever it was, whatever month. And I said, why? Well, because then we can market to them. I said, really? How? Well, because then they're just, they're going to, every time we post something, it's going to go to them. Are you sure? They didn't understand Facebook at all, but yet that was going to be their leading strategy. We're going to get 10,000 likes on Facebook. We're going to run one contest and we're going to get Facebook likes. To what end? Know your strategy before, make sure you can articulate the why before you just go with anything. Any intelligent fool can make things bigger and more complex. It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. Albert Einstein. Well, Al, we hope this makes you proud. This is Internet Marketing Explained. SEO, PPC, Facebook, Twitter, and Google, oh my. It seems like a lot, and although there is no wizard behind the curtain when it comes to internet marketing, a little education, solid planning, and hard work can lead you down the yellow brick road. On to you. Confused? Feel like you're already effective in internet marketing? Maybe your current website company is telling you they've got you covered. SEO, PPC, and more. For just $599 a month, 
Or is it your mother's cousin once removed that has you convinced that he can now channel Steve Jobs? Well, ouch, we know this may sting a little, but that's just not possible. Here's the secret. Wait, wait for it. Ah, uh, that's the thing. There isn't one. Maybe there used to be, but with the crazy animal updates and the social media frenzy, your hopes of buying your way to infamy or the first page of search engine results have been eliminated. The algorithm has taken control. It's all about strategy, which takes time, investment, and measurement. Google and their peers have successfully declared war on junky sites, lack of or poor content, and especially lazy marketing, like letting a vendor post the same content everywhere. They're in the business of information, and if yours is not informative, relevant, unique, and popular, bye-bye. Hear me when I tell you that they will sock it to you. Try posting the same content over and over across your sites and social media, it's a surefire way to guarantee the demise of your internet presence. So where do we begin? Content, this is a big one, social media, authorship, SEO, oh, and did we mention this encompasses everything, PPC, retargeting, reputation, likes, links, <gasps> and wait, there's more. It's all very complicated, but we'll handle it. Don't you worry, says the parade of vendors, all convincing you their way is best. Forget about it. It's all pretty logical if you grasp the basics and understand that every part is important and it all works together. Successful internet marketing simply takes a bit of understanding, holistic strategy, and good old fashioned hard work. So let's start the journey. Search engine optimization, SEO. Search engine's loyalty has to be with the user, the one who is searching. In a nutshell, Google's life purpose is to tune down the stupid and tune up the smart. Focus on the user, create amazing content that people will love and then share. That's what it's about. Videos, pictures, articles, infographics, etc. That's right, it takes time, money, resources, and smart people. But with great content comes legitimate backlinks, which are similar to votes that say you are relevant and will serve you up first. That's right, Google wants great content and proof that you're legitimately popular. No spam links, please. So if you're not producing great content, then you need to examine your marketing philosophy and maybe your head while you're at it. Social media. Social media serves as the transportation system for any worthy content. It's not just about getting likes or followers. That's not the name of the game. Think of social media as the popularity contest for your content. Good content equals engagement, which equals strong social signals to the search engines. And you must be measuring Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and more. And who will be prom queen or king? We will decide. Google Plus is a social platform too, but it stands alone. We'll discuss this a little later. Take note that social media is all about interaction and engagement with your target customers and whether they find the information you're sharing is valuable or not. On to reputation management. Think about it. How many prom kings and queens can afford to not be concerned about their reputation? Companies operate in an era where the consumer can make or break you with a few clicks of the button. Imagine seeing your company's name next to the words fraud, scam, rip off, bad service, or zero reviews. You have to protect your company through listening, proactivity, and the correct reactions. Getting bad reviews or complaints are a part of business. It's hard to satisfy everyone all the time. So when a mad customer decides to ruin your credibility, you want to make sure you have taken the correct steps to addressing it and prevent it from showing up on the first page of Google. PPC and retargeting. Well, if I told you that you could pay to jump right in front of someone who is actively searching for your exact product, would we fall in love? What if I told you that when people visited your site, you could then continue to follow them around the internet like a magnet and continue to message them over and over again? Imagine what that could do to your business. This is what PPC and retargeting can do for you. It's a must, and it is the quickest way to get in front of your target audience. Seriously, 10 minutes and pow! 
video. So we mentioned video in the content section, but let's further clarify the need for video. Video marketing is huge. And in fact, the second biggest search engine is YouTube. If you're not creating video, get another head check and then get started creating video right away. But remember the rules of great content still apply to videos. Now, let's talk user experience. Clean, simple, and easy are in. Confusing, ugly, and cluttered are out. Take a look at your website and see if you feel a sense of anxiety. If so, make the adjustment quickly. Google Plus Authorship. Okay, we decided to mention Google Plus by itself because Google controls the search industry. So you better be playing on their social media platform. They're making people take ownership of their content and rewarding those who create great content often. So what's the conclusion? When you understand the basics, internet marketing is pretty logical, but it is imperative to remember that these activities truly are connected, codependent, and interdependent, and they cannot stand alone in silos. Yeah, it is hard work, but done correctly and consistently, well worth the time, effort, and investment. This is all extremely important, and again, the main thing I want to get across is that it's not as complicated as all these vendors and all the hype is making you think it is. It's still very logical. I mean, I always say, you know, when, when I talk about SEO and I talk about search engines, I said, you know, Google's a business like any other business. They're in the business of information. And so they're always looking for ways to put the best product and improve their product for their consumers, which are people looking for information. So that's why you see these algorithm changes. Now, the lesson here is, you know, a lot of people were affected by doing all these black hat SEO things um, by these algorithm changes. They kind of dropped off the face of the earth. And if they'd just been doing the right things, which is, again, knowing what you stand for and doing the right things by your business, by your consumers, creating good content that's informative and valuable, you wouldn't have been affected. And in social media, it's still, you still can sort of game the system right now. But again, you know, if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. People that are still trying to game the system and paying $75 to get 100,000 views on a YouTube site or whatever, they're diligently working to make sure that they can stop that kind of stuff too. So the lesson is do the right thing, put in the work, get the understanding, and don't let you know vendors just talk you into whatever. And that brings me to the next thing, which is about don't copy. The biggest, one of my biggest pet peeves in the automotive industry and in talking to dealers is, you know, all oh, the, 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 you know, Joe's VW down the street did this sale last month and they sold this many, they did this mailer and don't copy, like don't copy because when you copy, all you're doing is repurposing an obvious layer. You don't understand their foundation and how that sale or that thing that they did applies to your dealership. You know, there's just no reason to obsess on competition. You need to understand, you know, when you just, when you copy somebody, like when you obsess on your competition, you just try to do what the guy next door is doing because they had success with it, you're lacking the understanding. And again, back to my whole speech, which is, you know, make sure you understand you know. Focus on your own dealership. Don't let your competition set the bar for how you're doing things, why you're doing things, you know? You don't need, just back to the Tiger Woods example, you don't need the shiniest, new, best, everything to be extraordinary. Um, believe it or not, like, you know, consumers are, are, are not just, there's more in that experience that you're talking about or who you're representative of in, in the community and their experience actually matching up with that emotionally is way more important to them than, you know, all the new doodads that you may have going on. And again, I'm not knocking any of that because it's all very important, but all of that stuff that was in that video is only important if you have that foundation in place because if you don't have anything to say, well, then you don't have anything to say, right? So it doesn't matter how many places you broadcast it or send it out or how many vehicles or tools you use, you don't have anything to say because you, you know, you're saying you, you always exceed customers' expectations and I'm sitting there, um, nobody's waiting on me, it's cold, everything's dirty, the receptionist was mean. I'm going, really? I, I'm not, like, 
even if I'm not consciously thinking about it, I already have a prejudice against what my experience is going to be here. So again, um, really, if you, it, you'd be amazed if you just, if you focus on those basics and get that foundation in place, and then I urge you to get education because Unfortunately, with the, with the pace that technology has changed and all the new tools and all the new things you can do, there is a lot to absorb. And I urge you to get the education however you can, whether it's on your own or with you know, a consultative agency or there, believe it or not, there are some good vendors out there that do a great job, but make sure that they're educating you on why they do what you do and what the benefit to your business is gonna be. Because I'm always amazed, you know, I'm not gonna name any names, but there's one sales force out there of one vendor I can think of that I swear they've either got pixie dust or they just scare the crap out of dealers. And, you know, they go, well, if you don't, if you don't do this, I mean, you know, the guy over here is doing this and you're gonna like, failures around the corner if you don't buy this. And you'd be amazed how many people or how many dealers buy and, and, and do it just based on fear and wanting to make sure, you know, setting their bar by looking at their competition, which is absurd. So again, it just is, it really just goes back to basics and getting that foundation in place. A few things that I think that I would humbly like to see, and when I got into this industry 14 years ago, I was like, you know, God, this industry needs some help. We got these guys on the TV screaming at us, and it's just awful, right? And the production quality is terrible. You know, you got dealers spending $100,000 a month on television, and they're letting the TV station film it for free, and you can tell. Looks, a, looks bad. I, I'm already expecting a bad experience because this is a cheesy, bad commercial, and the guy's yelling at me, for God's sakes. Why do I want to do business with him? Um, you know, the reality is the consumer's more empowered than ever before. They've got information at their fingertips. But yet, we still try to be all slick, willy, you know, with the negotiations and everything. Really, people just want to be told the truth. They want to be respected. They want to just look behind the curtain a little bit. You'd be amazed that if you just took time with somebody, no reasonable consumer or any consumer that you'd want expects that you're in the business of losing money. And so, you know, I'll observe some of the sales guys at some of our dealerships and, you know, they're pulling that whole like, you know, we're actually losing money on this deal. And it's like, really? Come on. Really? Yeah, you're, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm in this state of the art facility, but you guys are losing money on this deal. No. Again, emotional disconnect. People don't like that. Our brains don't like that. Our emotions don't like that. We make decisions very quickly, instantaneously, when we feel we're being lied to. We want to have the experience that we're expecting to have, that we want to have. So, you know, and don't be afraid to, to tell the truth and show some imperfections or say, you know, what's your, what's your biggest misunderstanding about this purchase or what are you worried about the most? Because I'd like to go ahead and just explain that to you because it's not as complicated as you think. I know that our industry has tried to make it really complicated, but it's not. You know, here's where, you know, here's what your pairs, what, how, where we make our money. They just want to look behind the curtain. They just want to feel like they're be t being told the truth and they're being respected. And it really sometimes is that simple. So, again, back to marketing as a whole, it's become this elusive thing. It really isn't. It's a very common sense, logical process, and it starts with the basics and understanding what you stand for, focusing on benefits, not features, of your team, of your dealership, of your advertising, everything. And, you know, again, get education. Don't just throw money at problems because you're just now amplifying that disconnect when you don't know what you stand for, when you don't know what it is that consumers should expect when they get there. So, um, again, just the, uh, back to the brain, everything, everything's about emotions. It's, it's decided instantaneously. So that's, that's really all I have today, unless there are some questions that you want to go to into any, any deeper on anything that I showed you today. Um, and, you know, hopefully you're inspired by something in here, either to just not be as intimidated by all the buzz and realize that marketing is still marketing and it's about it's the sum of everything you are and everything you do and those things matching up um i, I, I alan's in here now and i'll tell you that was 
It literally was one of the most eye-opening experiences I've ever had, was thinking that commissioned salespeople can act like human beings on the phone. And call after call, they just weren't. I was like, oh my God. So then I found like, oh, well, wait, now I finally understand. I get it now. I get. I, you're, you, you've got to. And again, I, and I've told Alan this story. I didn't want to sit through phone training. I'm like, really? And it was one of the most uh, impactful experiences I've had because I then realized, like, I always knew it, but I realized, gosh, marketing starts from that first impression with the receptionist and how long they're on hold. I mean, it's that simple. So hopefully it, it, you're all inspired with something and uh, you know, act on it because you know, when you're inspired to make a change in your business and to really sort of set the future and think about the future, when you're inspired, you can get two weeks worth of work done in 24 hours, or at least I can when I'm excited about something. So you know, inspiration is kind of like a, a time machine of sorts in that way. So that's it. Uh, thank you so much for <laughs> all of you coming. And if you have any questions about any specific point that you want me to go into or anything, I don't know. I'm from North Carolina, not South Carolina. I don't know. <laughs> but if you guys have any questions, please. Not all at once, though, please. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> thank you. Thank <laughs> you.